It is Mardi Gras time. This is the weekend before Mardi Gras, and we're going to spend some time talking about what it's like to be on a parade. David is with me as well, and we're going to just kind of kick things off. We've got a really uh, special presentation for you today. We managed to talk with some folks, happen to be our cousins, who ride on the parades, and they're going to give us a little bit of insight today as to what it is to be a crew member on these floats and to be able to you know, get a little insight, a little bit of background knowledge. So bring in David here. There you are. Hey, wow. Looking good. Very festive. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I got some of the uh, bling from last night, so. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And you didn't It'll get clocked in the face, so that's good. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, we, we uh, David's already been to a parade. He was at a parade last night. I'm not going to ask how he earned his beads, but <laughs> it is mobile. I don't think it's as uh, loosey-goosey as Louisiana and New Orleans. Was it a good time? That wasn't too bad. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, we go to uh, support the band that my daughter's in. The area we stand is pretty, pretty good group of folks. And so this is the crew of Columbus we went to. And they were probably the oldest organization in Mobile, an outgrowth of the Knights of Columbus. So um, they, uh, they, they do a good job. They have a lot of tradition and pretty generous. And uh, we had my brother-in-law and sister-in-law happen to be at the parade there too. So oh, nice. they helped us. I think we've got huge bags beads that just from him collecting them from the back and, and all kind of other stuff. So I didn't have to do anything to dishonor the family. To, uh, to get these beads. <laughs> oh, come on. You know it better. It would be honoring the family. <laughs> I mean, it's, we're, you're a Hubble man. Come on. We, we, we know how this goes. Well, yeah, cool. I, I, <laughs> we'll talk about the, a lot of the experience in the after show for sure. But uh, I wanted to get this, uh, this uh, interview going. This is uh this is our cousin's, Paul and Paul. <laughs> so Paul and Paul's son. So Paul the third and Paul the fourth. It's on Thursday with Muses, which is an all female parade, which is now doesn't even um, have a wait list anymore because it's so exclusive to get into that parade. Uh, it's a little bit smaller. They decorate shoes um, and signature throw. And it's, it's a vi very visually uh, aesthetically pleasing parade they, they spend a lot of time making their floats very pretty wow. and then friday night is hermes and crude ta kind of uh takes a lot a lot of liberties when when designing their their floats to uh, make political commentary yeah uh, of course uh so i mean i can tell you from this year i've seen a picture of both a Hunter Biden smoking a crack pipe and Donald Trump in chains. So like they 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 they're equal opportunity offenders. Okay. Uh, that might be on the same float actually. Uh, so they, okay. Muses, Muses was they interviewed the head of Muses and she explained how they got formed. They as women wanted their own women's lib type of parade. And they have marching groups in that that club the Pussyfooters the bearded oysters and the, oh the camel toes oh god <laughs> that's the marching group they have in their group and so you can imagine they do some political stuff as well but mostly centered around women's issues uh so i was shocked to hear this i didn't know they had i've never seen that parade so i didn't know they had these marching groups huh so paul you you started with bacchus Right, and then PJ, you join later on. So, Paul, how did you get into doing Bacchus? Oh, one of my friends asked me if I wanted to ride. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And there so wasn't like this ceremony and you know wax candles and all this other stuff. What happens is there's a Bacchus has a hierarchy and it's develops that you have a captain, right? And then there's a number of float lieutenants and a sergeant for each float decides if he's going to let you be part of the group or not. Hmm. Okay. Why? So there's also a thing called substitute rider that they're always looking for because people are in that don't want to get out but just can't or don't want to ride that year. Right. They get people to take their place. Okay, so once you lose your spot, it's gone if you don't have a substitute. Right. If you huh. say, I'm out, you're out. Okay. 
Well, it doesn't mean you can't come back in. Right, right. But as long as there's an opening on someone, they have like 35 to 45 people on a float. Okay. So there's a wow. limitation for the number of spots there are to ride. Sure, sure. And and so that was it. You were in the crew at that point. And uh, so, BJ, was that how you got on? Was your dad said you want to ride and... That was well, it. the first time I rode, I was uh, a little younger than 18. I'll say that. And uh, he got sick. My dad got sick and couldn't ride. Last minute. Last minute. Like the day before. And, you know, it's too late to find a sub. You know, this was like Saturday night. And you weren't feeling well. And we were on a different, uh, we had a different flow captain who, you know, he's not long long time ago but i rode next to uh, a very famous chef in the city of new orleans uh who was at commander's palace at the time and i had no idea because i was you know like a, uh, a yeah teenager. yes uh, i remember throughout the ride we would get to a checkpoint and a guy or somebody would come and hand him a brown paper bag and this chef would lean over to me and be like Hey, do you want a lobster po' boy? And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, you'd open it up and it's, <laughs> it's like a lobster po' boy or truffle fries or, you know, uh, a gallon of red snapper, you know, uh, the, the, the shooter. Right, like, right. So uh, I had a good ride that first time. That kind of <laughs> that kind of hooked me. Um, it was it was very fun. But that that is how I, you know, my, I got in through my dad and it's kind of turned into a family you know, tradition now. Um, we have everyone, you know, I think, you know, I, I've learned, especially moving back, that everyone has their own version of Mardi Gras. Um, you know, very often it starts with a family, you know, you know, uh, unit, you know, you go stand with your, your small children and, you know, you're on a ladder and that sometimes evolves. And now ours, we're, we're more of a downtown Mardi Gras family because we ride in Bacchus. Saturday, we have our float party, so we never really go to Endymion. We have our, a, a sit-down dinner in the French Quarter for our float on Saturday night. So it kind of, our whole Mardi Gras experience revolves around. And on, and on Saturday morning, Abby rides on Iris, which is actually the largest parade group of anyone, male, female, or whatever, in the city. It's 3,600 women. Wow. So it's like a, a super crew on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. How how long is the parade route for y'all? About five miles. Yeah, because I was all thinking like seven hours. <laughs> seven seven hours. hours. We get on at two wow. thirty. Yeah. They pull us up to the we park us on chop, you know, with the head float at uh, Napoleon and Chop, which is Tipitina's. Right. And then the thirty-two floats line up behind it, up down Chop. We get off, and uh, we may have something to eat or drink or whatever, and. Then you wait at five. Was it five fifteen or? Yeah, I think it's five fifteen. Five oh five. Five oh five. We start rolling, but <laughs> he knows we're well. on thirty one this year, the second to last. We probably won't turn the corner until seven o'clock. Ooh, wow. wow! Jeremy, one thing you asked about earlier was uh, the history of Bacchus and, yeah. and what the super cruise. Just to touch on this point once more, Bacchus is and pretty much every parade prior to, I guess, the 90s. I don't even know when they, they really changed it. They, they were more of a neighborhood endeavor. Uh, it, it was not as, as long of a route as it is now. And the other day on Twitter, I actually saw somebody posting, I showed my dad, the original routes of all the, actually, the routes of Mardi Gras in 1973. Was it 73, Dad? But it was a lot, lot smaller. Like Tux started at children's hospital and would parade in front of children's hospital so, so that the children could see mardi gras uh you go on magazine street but the uptown route traditional uptown route that we see now that didn't start until fairly recently uh, yeah, in 1968 bacchus first paraded down royal and bourbon street that's it and, uh, decatur and, and maybe something else huh. and the float were humongous and they were like okay you can't hardly fit these. If there's a fire, we're in trouble. So <laughs> right. they have changed their route, and they got we got uh, to the uptown route eventually. Yeah. We don't load the float. You pay. 
the money you pay, they it's loaded for you. Okay. So it's well, there. you that's, just walk up and it's loaded. But the Saturday night is the party, a dinner party at Arno's. Okay. Okay, it's a dinner party. party. And then that's just to get the group together and the wives get to come to that and or significant others and um, then we go on we finish that party and the next day we have to show up around noon get them fitted make sure everything fits get the face cut out on the mask and eat lunch and then and have a few drinks and then you go at 2 30 you got to be on the float and they run out they, they pull out of the convention center at around 2 30 and start their trek up Chapatulas because it's you know that convention center is right on Chapatulas basically a convention center boulevard so it's um then we ride up and we basically you can start put hanging your beads if you want take them out of the containers and hang them so you have them ready access but you know we only can do so much of that we're going to be there for three you know the, the end of the parade of guys are going to be there for about three hours before we roll beginning might is going to be there too one and a half it's not an inexpensive uh in, adventure i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah <laughs> speaking of which so you you have to buy your own throws correct is that part of the yeah. okay oh, yeah. so Trump, Trump what's what's China. the average what's the average spend yeah. on on throws for a parade <laughs> probably eight, eighteen hundred dollars probably up to two thousand depending on you know wow abby probably spends a thousand because she doesn't throw as much as us but is she um, kind of like the, you know, just <laughs> no? If, if you throw it like this, I well, I know, but I'm just saying one at a time. <laughs> is it? That varies from float to float on Bacchus too, because I have friends who are, you know, don't. We have a lot of bells and whistles on our float, uh, and I, I think we're pretty proud of, uh, you know, our float. We we've been throwing these snakes, these uh, these these uh, stuffed snakes for like six seven years now and it's kind of catching on other floats are wanting in on our snake game but i have a friend who rides on maybe a, a little bit more modest of a of the throws a little bit more traditional just regular beads and stuff and it's closer to a thousand so but that's that's about what it is uh it's a huge fantasy event if you really think about it yeah 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 i mean the, you, yeah because you... i mean we got I was trying to think of people I know in mobile Mardi Gras organizations. And I think that this had to be like a 20 year old number. That was like $400 that they told me when they told me 20 years ago, how much they were spending. And I think it was more of a modest type of crew. You were talking about, it's going to, it's going to be pretty late before you turn the corner and you know, you're on the route, which means you're also going to be the last, one of the last ones into the ball. Right. So the, all these dudes that are ahead of you, they're off the float. They're partying. So yeah. you're kind of bringing up the rear. Um, well, we party beforehand. <laughs> we party while they're rolling, and they party while we roll. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, we get we come in. We'll probably get in eleven between eleven and twelve into the convention center. Okay. Wow. Knock on wood. <clears throat> Knock on wood. Coming around ten. <laughs> Just one thing to add about the, the daily schedule uh, that I think David uh, will appreciate. So the, they provide us a meal when we get to the convention center after you go and check in and show your ticket. Uh, it's usually jambalaya, gumbo, and then there's a uh, roast beef that is being carved right there. And it's, it's, a, it's a big communal meal. And it's one of my favorite parts of the whole day is you, you sit down with people who you might not have ever met ordinarily. Uh, like I'll give you an example. So I, I went to college in Memphis. I'm a huge Memphis Grizzlies NBA team uh, fan, right? And I listen to another podcast every day. It's a Memphis sports podcast. One of the assistant coaches from the Grizzlies used to appear on that podcast, and I really liked him because he went to Jesuit High School. Okay, um, and I hear a voice that I recognize uh, just from the podcast, and it, it ended up being that that assistant coach. And I'm like. Ain't no way. I've never, I, I would have never guessed in a million years, but, uh, but now I see him all the time. I, I you know, I, I frequently text him. Uh, I'm sure we'll see him this year. And then one more thing to add, when we go get dressed, uh, he skipped over this part. This is another one of my favorite parts. Each float has a butler, huh. like a white coat butler 
who will tailor your your uniform and your uh, your costume exactly how you want. There's liquor on the table. He'll make you a drink if you want that too. Uh, and it's a, a big open convention center banquet hall with every every float is getting dressed in there. So is there, uh, aside from the cost of the uh, the throws, um, are there dues or membership dues that you have to pay annually to be part of the, the crew? Yeah, I think it's like 1300 Okay. Well, that's not terrible. So I mean, that's... We, for instance, we paid like 2400 this year, which included your beads being loaded, the dinner before, all the liquor that we buy... For before when we get dressed and on the float, right, and and a meal on the float as well while you. So from, at, at the ball after the fact, I mean, is that just, is that open to people y'all invite or just members of the cruise? Anybody, yeah, anybody can buy a ticket. Uh, actually, okay. So do so they? Anybody can buy a ticket, but not for every section. So we we now sit our float moved to all VIP. Uh, section so you get a ticket with like a rider's admission uh, like as our date right right and we're now in the vip section which is very nice uh otherwise if you're not in vip you have to bring your own food and alcohol or you have to order it beforehand no kidding okay that's which that's kind of what i was i was wondering about because i went to a couple of balls here in mobile <coughs> and um we have our i mean if y'all been through mobile we got the Civic Center downtown, which is a short, small, looks like a little Astrodome or Superdome uh, from the 60s. And so that's where a lot of the balls were. And the ones that I went to in the 90s, um, I got invited. I had free tickets, so I wasn't really knowing what to expect. Went in there, and I mean, the, the I guess I was thinking the food was going to be a little bit more like at a wedding or something like that. And, and it was like these little... Uh, cocktail smokies and um <laughs> little cheese uh, cube cheese things and i was sitting there thinking I, I was thinking like you were talking about what you had at the for your dinner uh with right. like a, a carving station and stuff <laughs> so obviously obviously i was either misinformed or just uh i don't think anybody informed me that's just my perception i guess of what i was expecting and i was doing a search and when i clicked on when i did a search on, on their website you came up, PJ, because you were standing in somebody's wedding that was uh, like in Mobile. Oh no! And I think it was. Oh there. yeah. <laughs> so, oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh oh. Do we need to get TMZ out here? I, I can or? tell you that wedding did not end well. Uh, <laughs> well, a year or two later. Okay. No, eight months later, uh, <laughs> and it, it did not end well. Not any fault of my own. Uh, <laughs> right. But uh, interesting. That's funny. That... Every year when we have to deal with the whole argument of who invented Mardi Gras type of thing, I mean, to me, it's kind of, it's almost a moot point because even though we're different cities, there's so much cultural share things that are shared that, I mean, everybody, I'd just be happy you have Mardi Gras. So if, the, if you enjoy it, just be happy you got it. Did you, uh, for the, did you, for the uh, you guys, you could check your phone. I sent you some pictures from inside the ball. I sent yeah. you some pictures from on the float. Yeah. Uh, when we were riding, so you might get an idea of what it's like uh, in the in the ball and in the on the float. Look at you with the Mister Clean outfit. That's uh... we were Mister Clean last year on float. <laughs> well, I'll put did these up when the, we. Uh, uh, I have this one of PJ kind of wow. rocking out to some rap. I I don't know. That that was you posted that one. I it yeah, was maybe not. Uh, try and keep it as PC as possible. <laughs> so, the snakes that we throw, we wrap up. You can see time and put them on our heads. Wow, these people love them. Then they see and it's easy to throw when they're wrapped up like that. Was it? Was yeah. it? I saw something. I don't know if it was Bacchus or not, but I saw something about a Mardi Gras king cake throw that oh, was. They had it in two forms. They had a pillow form, and it looked oh, like a, yeah, 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 you saw yeah. that. And then they That's had another one for a neck pillow. This year. It's a neck pillow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I've had like five people ask me to try and get one of those for them. We're not throwing it on our on our uh, float, but there is a float that, that it's a, that's got those. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, Marcus I, is putting that out publicly, uh, like on all their <laughs> socials. So it's it's seems pretty cool. 
Uh, I mean, this year, yeah. doing something special where every float is throwing a signature pair of socks. So we're the, the theme of our float is seven wonders of the world. Every float this year will have like a significant number uh, because it's the, the theme of the parade is take a number, please. So, uh, <laughs> okay. All so right. like 101 Dalmatians, seven wonders of the world. Uh, I think there's like first in 10 and there's a, uh, uh, a Jaden Daniels depiction on the, on the front of the float. Yeah. Thank uh, God they didn't include any of the saints. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That the, uh, talking about the, the cross pollination of the, between Mobile and, and New Orleans, but I've heard that for several years, I know at least on the North shore, there's uh, been the, the infiltration of throwing moon pies over there. Uh, do y'all ever see that in Mo in the New Orleans area as much? Well, that's a, that's on a lot of floats. Really? Moon pies? Yeah. Moon yeah. pies are a lot of floats. Yeah. Some huh. people even I, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're just easy to, to throw. Um, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, I guess, hand the right size to put in your hand and just fling uh, at folks. They get crushed, though, you know? I mean... Some of them do. Yeah. Yeah, you just eat yeah, them. They're also eat. not exactly fresh. So I think <laughs> yeah. they, they have a little bit of resistance, you know? <laughs> right. Which means like they're they're slightly weaponized, too. So that's... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's got yeah. some uh, well, air resistance. You know? Right. <laughs> so in Mobile, they used to throw boxes of Cracker Jacks. And for like from the fifties through the seventies, and then that was becoming a problem where it was hitting people, you know, with the corners and stuff. So they went to the moon pies cause it was going to be probably <laughs> kinder and gentler. Um, but yeah, some of the, some of those people got some good throwing arms with those moon pies. Well, I could tell you that, um, the, the previous, uh, version of me, my dad, uh, he, he's got a good throwing arm. You better watch out if you're on St. Charles Avenue because I think it's from his height. You know, he, he starts up so high, and you know, Dad, we're on the we're on the top level this year. You need to watch out. And, uh, <laughs> well, it's gonna my knock best somebody was, out. My best was the year that we had rain for Endymion, so they had to follow us. So they they were praying late. They had to wait till we pass, and then they could pass. So the crowd was. It had been raining for a couple of days. So the crowd is humongous. I mean, we're on St. Charles Avenue. I'm on the driver's side with him. And the people are across the neutral ground, across the other street on the other side. That's two lanes. And up the side street. Wow. And I made a, I made a throw all the way to the side street. The people were freaking in the air. <laughs> That's why. <I'm, laughs> and it just, you just take it and catch it right here. On the, and you just sling it. Yep. And it just it goes tumbling. But you know when these beads are kind of big, and when you catch them, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, especially when <laughs> yeah. it hit your face. Well, I, I thought you were tossing a gross that far. I was, I would have been oh. pretty impressed. No, it's a long, a long strand of beads, you know, like two and a half feet. Okay. The yeah. Beads are about like so. Yeah. And yeah. They, they get kind of, they got some substance to them. Hmm. Right. That's what PJ was saying. Yeah. Pot. All right. So that's your seven wonders of the world. Uh, yep. black and gold socks. Yep, and we got those, um, are, those are pretty cool. A, yeah, a medallion we hang from our neck. You see a, a close up of it. Oh and yeah, a, yeah. On yeah. a rope. Yeah, and then they, this is our croissant that we hang. We put on our um, suits the night before. The women we each get the wife and the husband gets one. You can see there's two rows of um, at the top two rows of pearls. Because Andy Garcia rides on our float, and he's an ex-king uh, of, of Bacchus, and our lieutenant is an ex-king of ours. So we got two kings on the float. Wow. Let's say it wasn't Andy Garcia the actor, though, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. yeah. Godfather yeah. 3 and all that, and Ocean's yeah. 11. Yeah. Terry Benedict. Our, Terry Benedict. Our, Terry Benedict. Our, our yeah. lieutenant's son married our float lieutenant's son married Andy Garcia's daughter like a year ago or so, two years ago. Oh, uh, okay. He'd been riding. See, he was riding on the float already. And um one year they lost the king at the last minute, illness or something. So Bacchus asked him, Would you like to ride? He said, Absolutely. So he moved up and was the king. And so he's he's continues to come. He loves it. 
Are there other celebrities that that ride on these floats in the what various tell us about? <laughs> Well, we, we took a picture with Zach Streif and Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Uh, they, there's a celebrity float. Well, you guys so hung out at uh, Port Orleans, right? That You did that? Or did or, that. Or, yeah. or, or did Zach bring a bunch of beer or something like that? Uh, yeah. I don't remember. He served up. He, he made some Bacchus beer for yeah. us. He, he put a label on it, Bacchus beer. So we had that. And he gave it out to all the floats as they came by. Yeah. I, guess, I guess the other question that I could ask, and I don't know if it's a there's a way to answer it in a delicate way is uh what kind of things <laughs> you see any things that you can share from your vantage point on the floats watching the crowds that's yeah the first time i saw that kind of a thing was a 75 year old woman <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's, like, it's like put them back had, lady <laughs> she had them tucked into her pants <laughs> no and she was standing on the back of a pickup truck in an empty parking lot and yelling, and I was like, "We happened to stop right there, and it's a long stop." So I told her, I looked away, I said, "Look, pull your shirt down. I'll throw you something." It's less than you would think, and oh, yeah, it yeah. Is. it's maybe once or twice on the route, and I can give you two locations. It would be it's either going to be by Tulane University or it's going to be by Canal Street, hmm. uh, and it's not very not very appetizing. It and <laughs> it's a lot less now that there's cell phones with really good cameras on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Most of my exposure to Mardi Gras was, was it the crew of oh, Atlas? Was it? No. Yeah. yeah. Atlas. Well, the truck parades on Mardi Gras Day. That Zeus. Was, Zeus, yeah. yeah. That was my exposure to Mardi Gras at, up until I was 19, I think. Maybe maybe oh, wow. 20. And then I, I had some people come in from out of town, and they wanted to go down to the French Quarter. I'm like, sure, yeah, it sounds like a great time, you know. And I went there, and I was like, holy crap, this is not what I expected. And and I saw, frankly, at that point, I saw more men disrobing than I did women. And that was, yeah, I was like, I got to well, get out of here, guys. Well, <laughs> let, me, let me update you now. There's a couple of guys, one of my... The, guy has built my pool he's the number one body painter in the city booked for three months in advance i was walking down royal street i looked to the right of me and there's a girl walking next to me young good looking girl and i looked again out the corner of my eye and then i looked carefully every part of her body except her face was painted with no clothes on wow and the law in louisiana in new orleans anyway is you have to have something covering they count latex as a cover. Sure. <laughs> Why not? You know, it's not drinking and driving if you don't put the straw inside the lid, right? So that's, you know. So it, it, it was like, this. there's some crazy stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, is there anything so, that goes on, you know, on the floats, the years that you guys have been riding where, you know, it was, it was some memorable event or something that happened that was like, wow, that, that was crazy? I had a brick thrown at me. Oh. Oh, crap. Okay. I had a brick. The, the surround for a uh, garden around an oak tree on St. Charles on the passenger side. Yeah. Had a guy with a little three or four-year-old girl standing there, and I guess he got upset that his do girl didn't get a doll, which I wasn't throwing any dolls. I didn't have any. So he picks up a, a brick and hums it, and it's, Luckily, it was cold that year, so I wore a couple of layers and had a sweatshirt and that. Yeah. And it just bowed up, and it hit me in the chest. And I went to run because on my float, on the top deck, we had a police person. And I was, and we were stopped. So I figured they, he could get arrested, right? So I take off running. I get about four steps, and all of a sudden, I, didn't, I forgot I had my tether on. I was connected to the side of the float. And I went down on the ground, on the floor to float. <laughs> That was pretty enlightening because, I mean, there's a lot of things that they were able to share with us that, like I said, I've never ridden. Don't know if I'm, I'm necessarily, I mean, I'm sure it'd be a, a fun experience to a certain extent. I think they sound like they got it done right because they have people that actually load the things for yeah. them. And, yeah. um, <clears throat> you know, so uh, versus some of the others that we've, uh, that I've heard of people uh, riding, uh, at least in Mobile. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a lot 
I'm sure there's even there's a whole lot more interesting things, but just from that short conversation, I mean, the, uh, you get to do and participate and share. And then at the same time, you got to be careful because of obviously your eyes can get hurt with some of the things you yeah. see as well as, uh, <laughs> as well, well as bodily harm. Yeah, too. exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, there's the mental toll that is like, yeah. okay, yeah, I didn't need to see that, but <laughs> still, you know, it's, it's, it is a, it's a very unique experience and it's, and it's one of those things that, only a, a very, very small subset of the population in the U.S. gets to experience. And and it's yeah. something that's, I, I think, uh, you know, if I had the opportunity, I, I would do it. It would be great to do it on a year where it's not cold and it's not raining, yeah. you know, but you can't predict that yeah. kind of stuff. So, you know, it, that said, I, I, I think once you get rolling, and you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're in it. You're you, a lot of those things just kind of fall by the wayside. You know, the inconvenience of being a little bit wet or damp, or you know, yeah. and if you if you are drinking, obviously that that definitely contributes to the warmth if it's cold outside. Yeah. So yeah, I I I mean, it would be it would be kind of cool, but at the same time, I've already I put in my time marching, walking those routes, so <laughs> I'm not doing that ever again the scenes in the tap room that we would often catch glimpses. Oh but, yeah, yeah. But those were, those yeah, cameras are on bourbon street. So that's usually about, this is, this is that, uh, golden hour. If you want to call it that, that's actually sounds kind of gross. Um, but it's, it's the hour where people are just I'm sorry <laughs> but um, it's that it's that hour maybe hour and a half or so where you have where people are just inebriated enough to do all kinds of crazy stuff but they haven't gone so far that they're yeah. either knocked out passed out just tune into the rainy cage and you never know what you'll see on Mardi Gras day <laughs> yeah you never know you never know I may get into you know no yeah, I'm not gonna do that oh. Yes. That was quite the experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was that was a good call with them. I I really enjoyed just talking with them because they they you know, like we were saying in the video, you really don't get a chance to talk or unless you're on those crews, you don't get a chance to really talk about those kinds of things or or see them. You'll you'll see little snippets here and there, but to hear some of the stories that we heard and to, truth be told, there there was a, a decent amount edited out, but it, it was it was it was mainly for everybody's benefit, not not to protect the innocent or the guilty. But it, yeah. you know, the, it's a it's a really cool experience. It looks like a really cool experience. And I was a, I actually got texted by a buddy of mine who rode in Hermes yesterday, and he was gosh he was what time was it it, was, it had to been like nine or ten o'clock in the morning and the streets of the french quarter were just packed with people ready wow. to go and the parade wasn't until like the afternoon <laughs> the evening time yeah. and they man and he he mentioned that to get on what did he say Actually, I, well, I I want to say that his just to ride as like a substitute, like like Paul was talking about, it was twenty five hundred dollars buy in. Yeah, and that's for Hermes. I mean, I don't know, I don't know much about much of anything when it comes to pecking order with the parades. But you know, one of the things that I did omit in in the original part of the interview was the the tussle back and forth between Bacchus and Rex as to who was. Mardi Gras, just because it, it, it was, you know, the, there's, a, it's, it's very interesting to say the least when the kinds of things that, that happened in the past long time. Yeah. Ago. I was going to say in, in the earlier part of the interview too, Paul told us about a LP, or I think it's an LPB or WYES, which is the local New Orleans channel. Yep. <laughs> public, public uh, TV had done a special on a gentleman named Blaine Kern, who was called Mr. Mardi Gras. And uh, Jeremy's posted it on the YouTube, I mean, on the Facebook channel. That's and, correct. Um, the link to it. And I watched it this morning because uh, I hadn't had a chance to watch it with all that was going on. And uh, they go into detail. And I noticed that, didn't ne notice it and didn't make the connection when we were talking to them. But with the little face covering that Paul had yeah. with the B on there, 
Well, that's the Brennan's B, I'm pretty sure. Right. Um, or Bacchus B. Maybe well, it, it could be. Bacchus. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it could go either way, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it looked to me like it was the same font that you'd see on the old Brennan's restaurant. But yeah. Maybe just my, my imagination. But anyway, the uh, documentary was really well done, in my opinion. And I learned a whole lot about the the whole New Orleans parading cruise from our cousins and as well as from that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, like I said, I've had my, most of my Mardi Gras experience has been or carnival experience is here in Mobile, which they do a fine job of. And I mean, the intents and all are basically the same as what you'll have in, in Louisiana, but it's interesting to really see the personalities about it because the other thing that they talk about, they told us about, and you'll see in the video, uh, if you watch that documentary is the diversity in that particular crew. Bacchus was like one of the first ones to be that diverse with the, uh, the, uh, the membership. Yeah. So, well, um, yeah. And, and there's, there's a lot of, uh, for people outside of new Orleans, the, the crews were fairly exclusive early on and, the being that time of uh you know in in the history of new orleans it was predominantly limited to white men and <clears throat> bacchus was one of the first crews to right. allow other ethnicities into the into the uh, the crew and now it's just i mean as they were mentioning with with orpheus and with crew de ta and all these other parades that are rolling out, I mean, it it is, it, it's all over the map. I mean, it's just oh, yeah. what he was talking about with the different, the, the groups that were walking in the women's parade, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the pussyfooters and the things like that. <laughs> so it's going, I said, you know, as I was watching that, and I watched it many, many times over the past couple of days. I was like, do I keep that in or do I edit it out? And I was like, ah, screw it. It's Mardi Gras. We're going to keep it in. So, it, it, but there was some things that were omitted for the, for sensitive ears. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it, it's, you know, we, we often talk about Mardi Gras as if everybody that's watching knows what's yeah. going on. And a lot of people don't. I mean, there is, there is quite a bit that, that is, you know, people just think that Mardi Gras is Bourbon Street, getting drunk, yeah. puking all over the place, and then going back to the hotel and recovering for a couple of days. And you can certainly do that. I think that's idiotic, but you could do that if you wanted to. The, the reality is, is that Mardi Gras has very deep roots and in the, and it's in the region. I mean, it's like you said, it's from Mobile, all the way over, and Galveston will leave them out of it. The, but you know the, yeah. <laughs> the the but the rest of the you know the Gulf South, and actually the pictures that you sent me from last night's parade, I would have thought that could have been St. Charles. You know, the, with yeah. what I saw, I mean, it didn't look any different really from that vantage yeah. point. So yeah, I mean, it's a cool time. It's a really cool time to go. You know, truth be told, I was I was at the airport this morning. I went to the flight that was going to New Orleans, and I expected it to be packed and lots of people with all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff on, and it was nothing. I mean, really? nothing. Huh. Uh, so they're already all down there, tearing it up already. Or yeah, yeah. that it's just not type of people that are going down. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. But it was. I found yeah, it very I mean, interesting. I think in the uh, the Kern documentary they talk about the how it became much more touristy. I mm -hmm. guess I can't remember what whether that was the. Oh, I think what he was saying, or one of the guys was saying, maybe it was one of the Brennans, was how the maybe when the Rose Bowl parade started coming out a lot, right. people would see all that type of thing, and they realized people were so enthralled with parades in general, how I think the city of New Orleans kind of caught on to that opportunity to, to really kind of pull people in. And, yeah. and Mr. Kern himself with the creativity helped add to that whole thing. And, and some of the other things with his uh, rental floats yeah. that allowed some of the crews that Paul and PJ were talking about, and you were alluding to some of those crews to, to develop and, you know, I'm just kind of thinking about it after watching that, that there's a lot of, you know, when you give, it's kind of like having YouTube and, um, and Facebook where we have the accessibility to create and share things through that medium. Now you got crews that were not just the people who were the, the very wealthy, but the folks who were, I think, 
I think Paul was saying like pipe fitters and yeah, and such, it, he was saying it, yeah, formed. Endymion, so which is rolling yeah. tonight, and actually just a few hours it's going to be rolling. So yeah, yeah. Endymion then, was yeah. pipe fitters, electricians, the plumbers. Yeah, that's yeah. what he was saying. Yeah. So I mean, you got a lot of creative group of individuals that uh, with a lot of unique personalities that add to that whole, and you can have that different experience as PJ was saying, where you have you can have your own, you can you can basically make the Mardi Gras experience, what you want it to be. And you can venture out and do like you talked about, maybe go down that path and have too much (laughs) excess and then realize that's not the kind of Mardi Gras that I really want to partake in. Yep. Um, And that's, like I said, over here, we have Fairhope, we have a smaller parade and that's what we took the kids to Mm -hmm. initially because we felt one, the size was, it, it was contained and Fairhope, Actually, as you were talking about Mobile, certain parts of Mobile, if you look at it, it's like French Quarter or even St. Charles Avenue. I mean, there are certain things about it that it could be a double and has in the past been double for New Orleans and some films. Yep. But Fairhope even has some of that quality to it as well. So we could kind of get that in a real quick experience where they could see the, the parades, understand the the concepts of it. And they enjoy themselves, the riders, just as much as they do in any of the yeah. other cities. Yeah, yeah. And so, but then, like I said, you know, there's all the things we've talked about this year with the, the king cakes. And then, like, you know, the traditional foods that we've already been feature, featuring and will probably feature a couple more times, you know, the jambalayas and the gumbos and and then the beignets. And then... Red beans and, then and rice is going to be a big one moving up real soon here. You know, that's... Uh, for the Lenten season, red, red beans and yeah. rice is going to be big. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to think if there were... Oh, the other thing we didn't really mention, I guess, is that Paul's wife, Abby, and PJ's mom, yeah. she rides in the... She's riding right group. now. Oh, yeah. Iris. Yeah. yeah, she's riding right now. So that's... Anyway. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up and then uh, go over into our after show because we've got... Some fun stuff to talk about. Just real quick, we have now a page where you can buy us a coffee. And if you scan that little QR code, that'll take you to this page. And there's two things you can do. There's One is you can get us a coffee, and we really appreciate the support. You can also sign up for our new newsletter, which will start in March. So the more email addresses we get collected, the better, and you'll know what's coming up in the in the podcast and then we've got a lot of really good things planned for after the boucherie which is coming up two weeks from today yeah so two weeks from today we got the boucherie coming so i'm i'm excited about that but anyway yeah we'll, we'll be in a pork coma about this time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i hope so i hope so in a good way all right guys well we're gonna cut on over to the after show so thanks for watching and uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe on your way out the door if you wouldn't mind all right everybody take care and we'll see you in the after show thanks dave yep